Good morning everyone and how are you doing on this fine day? It's still a little bit grim but hey we have daffodils which means it's almost springtime. I'm very very excited. I do love my daffodils. It's my um weekly charity where I just go buy as many daffodils as I can at the supermarket so I can um save them from rotting and then also get a the mine and they're just so beautiful they're so beautiful i even painted them this week <laughs> so today i'm here to talk to you about something very dear to my heart very beautiful and it is discovery of witches <laughs> i don't know about you but i absolutely love this book series I first discovered it when I saw the TV series for season one and oh, it is so addictive. It's so addictive that my mother, when she came to visit, she doesn't binge watch TV series. Um, she binge watched that TV series and I didn't see her for eight hours and that's unheard of. It just shows how good it is. And once I discovered it was a series, I'm like, right, let's get the books. And um, every time I pick up a Discovery Witch book, you don't see me for the next couple of days because my face is like this. I literally will even walk around the house reading it because it's so good. What makes it so good? It's written by a historian, Deborah Harkness, and she puts so much detail into things and you want to go learn that information. And then when you discover these things, you want to go research more. It's inspired me so much, this book in particular, because they go back in time to the Elizabethan period in 1590. And in a couple of months, you'll be seeing what I've been working on for the World of Wearable Art Awards because they're doing a category called the Elizabethan era. And a lot of inspiration has come from this and researching into alchemy and the history of many different nations during this period. So hopefully it'll look really stunning. So season two has finally been released and last week the wedding episode was released. Now I had been looking forward to this episode so much. If you don't want spoilers, go watch the episode, come back and we can discuss it more. Now in the book, the details of this wedding were so delicious. I was so, so excited to see what they were going to do. Now, another thing to be said, if you're an avid, passionate reader and then they do a TV series and you're disappointed, it's not great. But I've always been able to divide those two things because it's two different things. But I was dying to see how this descriptive information came out on the TV. Not to be disappointed in my budding colleagues, they created a beautiful costume. I just didn't expect it to look like that. <laughs> I really thought it was going to be something completely different. I had such a vision of it and it wasn't it. I was so disappointed. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> like everything in that series, the costumes were fantastic. And this is the only one that let me down. It was really, really extravagant and it wasn't the color I thought it was going to be. But again, you did such a fantastic job. If the cutter and the designer and the maker I was watching this, it was beautiful. It suited the landscape that was in, but it wasn't how I imagined it. And another thing about the episode, like they talk about the huge amount of people that are in Septor, that live in the castle, that are part of the village. And it was at Christmas, so I expected this huge, huge, huge scene. And I guess because they filmed it just as, you know, all the COVID stuff was starting to happen, and it was in Northern Italy where they filmed it, so I guess they had to probably cut crowd numbers down they might have not have had the budget they didn't feel like it was necessary there might have been a whole sort of reasons why they didn't follow through with like the descriptive details and i'm not criticizing them at all i'm just going to talk about today how i imagined the costume and what design i would have done as a fan of the books as a costumer and if you really really like the design that i have in mind 
give it a like this video um, I could say maybe 20 likes <laughs> to for me to actually make the costume but no let's have some positive reinforcements let's say if I get 50 likes on this video which will probably not happen and I probably will make the costume anyway when I have more time but if you give it 50 likes I will make this costume and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna read you some of the descriptive details in this and imagine what you think the costume would look like how would you see it because there's certain moments I've read in the book and I have in my head that she had to wear so let's delve into the book and see what you think so if you've not watched the series Diana Bishop and Matthew de Clermont they've come from modern times and they've time traveled back into 1590 he's a vampire he's 1500 years old and she's a witch and she's discovered she's a special sort of witch so she can time travel and she's an extra extra special witch and they've had to go to France to meet his father and his father is a very tough vampire <laughs> the gown lay out by far the grandest thing I've ever worn the dark green fabric reminded me of the cypress by the temple now rather than the hollow that decorated the chateau for advent and the silver oak leaves embroidered on the bodice caught the light of the candles as the buck's antlers had caught the rays of light of the setting sun. The girl's eyes were shining when they finished. I had been able to get a glimpse of only my hair swept into a coil, twisted into braids, and my pale face in Louise's polished silver mirror. But their expression indicated that my transformation was wedding worthy. Bien, Jeanine said softly. Catherine opened the door with a flourish and the gown's silver stitches flared into life in the torchlight of the hall I held my breath and waited for Matthew's reaction. Jésus, he said, stunned. You are beautiful, mon coeur. Matthew took my hands and lifted my arms to see the full effect. Good God, are you wearing two sets of sleeves? I think there are three, I said with a laugh. I had on a linen smock with tight lace cuffs, tight green sleeves that matched my bodice and skirts and voluminous puffs of green silk that fell from my shoulders and were caught at the elbows and wrists. Janine, who had been to Paris last year to attend upon Louisa, assured me the design was a la mode. How am I supposed to kiss you? With all this in the way, Matthew's finger drew around my neck. The pleated ruff, which was standing about a good four inches, quivered in response. <laughs> if you squash it, Janine will have a stroke. I murmured as he carefully took my face in his hands. She employed a contraption resembling a curling iron to blend the yards of linen into a crisp figure eight transformation. It had taken her hours. Ah. Never feared I'm a doctor. Matthew leaned in and pressed his mouth to mine. There is not a pleat disturbed. Attends, je crie quelque chose parce que une autre chose je veux monter. All right. So, we're a bit further along and they're separating for the night before the wedding. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon, Matthew murmured against my lips as we parted. I'll be the one in the veil. Most brides didn't wear them in the 16th century, but they were an ancient custom, and Philip said that no daughter of his was going to the church without one. I haven't done a veil, but we could do something gentle and silk. So further along in the story, on the actual wedding day, now the costume on the wedding day is redonkulously described. It sounds so elaborate it doesn't even come into my head the imagination of it so it, it just sounds nuts and it sounds like them showing up so I definitely have designed the pre-wedding dress because to me that dress is more simple it's more what Diana the actual character would wear she would want something very relaxed even though it sounds extremely detailed in this book, to me, in my head, it was a very relaxed design. Now, as you can see, the costume designer had a hard time because there's two really, really descriptive designs. Now, as I said, I wanted to make it very simple, but really effective and stunning. Okay, so let's talk about designing it. Diana is a very relaxed person. She just kind of goes with the flow. So it needed to be simple, but effective. It needs to be a cypress tree green. I was going to do a little bit of holly as well because it's a mixture of the two. It needed three sleeves, it needed a ruff, but I'm going to make it more Diana style. 
and I needed some oat leaves embroidery. Oat? Oak. I always do that when ordering coffee. I get very confused between oat and oak. It's very hard at the moment. So, without further ado, here is my design. So, in regard to this, I looked at cypress trees, as I said, and I found this sort of tone. This is many layers of drawing, by the way, and paints. But I found this sort of tone of green really suited it. It had, like, I think green in a velvet is such a stunning statement. When you walk in, it's just, and I really wanted her to wow, like really wow. And this is how I always imagine her in a spectacular green. And then I wanted her to have these beautiful big sleeves. Now I say big sleeves because as you can see here, this is not historically accurate to 1519, but this early 1500s here, I did a lot of research into the 1520s and the 1530s. And you can see that from the sleeves because they're still very Renaissance style. Now I say this because throughout the book, when Diana's discovering more and more about Matthew, she uses the word vampire, scientist. And then I think there's another one, spy, poet. And the thing that really stuck to me was Renaissance Prince. So throughout all the books and their courtship, he's just very old fashioned. So even though it may be a la mode and we want to do it 1590s sort of period, but I had this imagination that she was relating to these words she developed in her head of Matthew. So I want it to still be very Renaissance and old fashioned and romantic. And that's why I've done these sleeves and the neckline because as you can see here I've not done a big rough but I've done that collar to make it still very simple but relates to the story and also that means he can kiss her on the neck and just be more relaxed because as I've said I feel like Diana's a very relaxed character and then to show you the multiple sleeves I've done very tight fitting sleeves here but the fabric gathers around it at these little brooches here and then you have little puffs of white coming through, white silk. So you've got that three sleeves. Then you've got beautiful lace here on the cuffs as well. That's also written in the book and that's the same lace that they've used here. And I wanted to be able to show the slip because there's a discussion about the linen smock. So I wanted to see that but make it a bit more fru fru. So you could do fabric like this, which is actually the sleeve fabric. So I wanted to use this lace as well because I've used this for a denim jacket and it was for my Queen Elizabeth jacket and I just thought that was really, 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 really stunning and very appropriate to the period and I was just gentle and relaxed and that's, again, all I wanted. It was a very relaxed wedding dress for her, but elaborate. And I would also embroider all of the oak leaves and I've done a little design here to show what it'd be like because I would love to do some silver work. That would be really, really stunning to do and learn how to do that. And I feel like it would just be placed around here so you could see the little light picking up and then gently around the waist as well. And I think that would be really, really elegant and perfect. And then as I said before in describing it all, the necklace. I imagine a necklace of chains of gold and pearls and little opals. And that necklace I have in my mind is a very modern necklace at the moment. I know there's lots of fashion trends with jewellery at the moment. It's very old costume jewellery which is just perfect. Another little aspect I wanted to include in the design was the pearl earrings that they used to time travel into this period and they were use, um, usables earrings. I've also included some of the fabrics here. I picked this up in Paris ages ago and it's such a beautiful silk and it's a mixture of greens so that would really pick up on the landscape because so from what I've understood Septour is in the Midlands southish of um, France so it's a lot of sunshine so you have a different landscape so you do have darks and you have sun-dried um, leaves so it's a mixture of different greens so I feel like that all really picks up in the landscape and like this silk was just stunning and that would be the tight fitted sleeves you would have this lace for the collar and the cuffs. And then I, I would use this personally because 
I like that, but maybe a different tone, but these are the ones I had at the house. But that sort of velvet, like that rich, delicious, elegant velvet, I can imagine that. And oh, all these beautiful cartridge pleats. And you could have these beautiful silver brooches made to hold the sleeves together. Like you could make anything. Like honestly, it would be so beautiful to have little stones in it that pick up on the necklace and pearls and then have this most fabulous smock coming through. And I think that would be such a beautiful design to create. I would really, really love to do this. It's, it would be such a beautiful, rich velvet. These beautiful leaves, I can, I can see it. And I can see her walking down the stairs, the fabric trailing behind, the whole village going, oh mon dieu, c'est magnifique. And just Matthew's reaction when he sees this because it would be his Diana and it'll be something that both of them loved. And ladies and gentlemen, this is my version of Diana's wedding dress from Discovery of Witches. <sighs> so what did we learn from this? Well, the imagination is a wonderful thing. Even though you've got such descriptive details and something, it's amazing what your head would come up with to create a design. Um, another thing we learn is um, make sure you separate TV from book, otherwise you will be disappointed. <laughs> another thing is that my colleagues, well done. You created some really, really stunning posies. I think my favorite was in episodes one. Oh, those big sleeves and oh, this deliciousness. Oh, oh, oh. Well done. I would also love to know what you guys think of the costumes from this series. They've done a fantastic job of making it very historical accurate. So how would you have Diana's dress? Would you do it similar to how the book is? You have two choices there. One's insanely extravagant, which needs a huge amount of budget and fabric and embroidery. The other one is the evening dress, but it's more, I feel like, Diana's design. Do you prefer how the TV series has done the costume? Like, don't get me wrong, that collar with the opening shot. <sighs> Damn, girl! That was stunning. Or would you do something completely different? So please comment below because I really, really love to know. Now, after all that costume chit chat, I hope you have a really fantastic day. Hopefully you'll um, binge watch Discovery Witches season two. And also, while we're at it, let's just talk about the author because apparently she's re releasing a number five book, which should be interesting. Because I do love a writer who's a historian because they will research and create such detailed information that will make you want to go be a historian as well and learn more about that period. And that always makes costuming more fun. So until next time, I'll see you on the flip side. Jeez oh, Louise, lockdown's getting to me. I have lipstick everywhere from kissing. Oh God.